What's up guys, Iovo here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own profile picture. Now, if you guys want to see more tutorials like this, be sure to leave a big thumbs up, and if we can hit 75 likes, I'll do one on how to make your very own Minecraft profile picture as well. But yeah, with that being said, the first thing you want to do is open up Photoshop, and then go to File, New, and then make sure that the width and height are set to 500 by 500, and the background contents are transparent, then just click OK. Now, when you're making a profile picture, you have to keep in mind that you have pretty much unlimited possibilities, right? I can't show you how to make every single type of profile picture, but I can kind of give you the gist of what you can do to make your very own version of your profile picture or avatar. So the first thing you have to do for a profile picture is find the background. Now, you could obviously go to the rectangle tool, double click the color palette and select any color. And then you can, you know, draw a rectangle around it to make your background. And then you can right click, go to blending options and even add some other effects like you can add a gradient overlay and mess with that and have a nice background like so. But the real fun is at Google Images. If you go out to Google Images, you can find a ton of different backgrounds that you can use for your profile picture. So here I've set up a few examples. For example, you can search for a radial background, which will give you a background like so. You can search for a grunge background, which you see in more Call of Duty type of thumbnails and banners. You can search for a flare background, which has like the lights. You can just search for a textured background which of course has rough and smooth textures on it. And you can also search for gradient backgrounds, which have this nice calming look to it. So in this case, we are going to use a radial background. Uh, I like this one right here. And we are going to click view image, right click and save image as, and then just save it as radial. Now, of course, whatever you like, go ahead and save it because we're going to be using it in Photoshop next. Okay, so now we're back in Photoshop and now what we're going to be doing is importing the background that we've just downloaded. So you want to go to File, Place, and then just find the location of your background and just place it into Photoshop. So mine is called Radial and I'm going to place it. Now to resize it, just hold Shift and drag the anchor points like so and you can move it around and then just press the check mark. Now once your background has been placed, if it's not 500 by 500, you can obviously center it. So all you want to do is press Control A, which is going to select the area of the entire layer. Then make sure the background is selected in the layer section. Then go to Layer, Align Layer Selection, Vertical Centers. Then Layer, Align Layer Selection, Horizontal Centers. And that should align the background to the actual layer. And once you're done, press Control D to deselect. All right, sweet. Now we have our background done and placed in Photoshop. Now we can just experiment and add some effects to it. So a lot of effects can take place in the blending options menu. So right click on the layer and click on blending options. And here you can see tons and tons of different things you can add to your background. So I'm going to, for example, go onto color overlay, make the color overlay black, and then change the opacity a bit. And as you can see now, when I put the font in, it'll stand out more. And of course you can make the color whatever you want. So I think this purple looks nice, maybe a bit darker. There we go. I think that looks good. Yeah. So that, and of course you can, you know, mess with the other settings as well. You can add a satin, for example, you could even go all out and add a gradient, which would look pretty cool. But yeah, the choice is up to you. Some other effects you can also add would be at the top where the filter tab is. Just click on filter and then you can blur it and add maybe, for example, a motion blur like so, and then you can mess around with that. And you can just add a ton of effects also from the filter tab. Now, once you have your fancy schmancy background done, it's time to add some shapes and text to the actual profile picture. So we're going to create a new layer. And in this case, we are going to add a circle shape. So I'm just gonna hold down the rectangle tool until I see ellipse, click on the ellipse tool. And now I'm going to set the fill to nothing and then give it a stroke. I'm going to make the stroke white and make it, uh, I don't know, we're gonna start off with 10 PT. Of course, you can use any shape you want, but for mine, I'm gonna try the ellipse one and then just hold shift and make my ellipse. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to make the stroke a bit bigger, maybe 15. Oh, let's actually just amp it up to 20. That looks good. And then I'm gonna press control T, hold shift and make it a bit bigger. That looks pretty good. So to center it, all you have to do is do the same thing you did for the background and press Control A. Layer, Align Layer Selection, Vertical Centers, Layer, Align Layer Selection, Horizontal Centers. And 
just I'm gonna make it a bit bigger there we go that looks nice all right so once you have put in your shape you can do the same thing and add some effects to your shape so once again you can right click on the layer go to blending options in this case I think it would look nice with the gradient so I'm going to slice gradient overlay um, I'm going to leave it a black to white gradient, but I'm going to just change the opacity to 10%. So then you have this like metallic kind of finish. And then I'm also going to add a drop shadow. And in this case, I'm going to make the opacity 100%, distance 0, spread 33, and size 33. And that really pops out. You can once again, of course, add a bevel and emboss, which gives it that 3D look. You can also experiment with the contour and the texture. But yeah, you can just experiment with that. And then once you're done, we can move on to the next step. So the second last step is to actually add some text to the logo. So I'm going to make another new layer. And in this case, I'm going to find a font that I like. Now, if you don't have a font or if you're looking for a font that you might want to use, you can head on to thefonts.com where you can browse, browse through tons of different fonts and find one that suits your YouTube channel. So for example, you can go into comic, you see all of these fonts and they're free I'm pretty sure so just click download and download them and install them and you'll be good to go so once you have found a font you like I like the fonts Obelix Pro you're just going to want to type out whatever character so I'm going to make the color white and then type out Z that looks pretty nice and I'm going to make the size 250 of course it's all about experimenting 350 looks a bit better is that too big I don't think that's too big yeah that looks nice and I'm going to center the Z to everything. So you've already seen this. Just control A. Layer, align layers to selection, vertical centers. And then layer, align layers to selection, horizontal centers. And I'm going to do the same thing I did for the shape. And of course, add effects to it. So I'm going to go into blending options, add a gradient overlay. I'm going to keep it matching. So just black and white with the opacity of 10%. And also add a drop shadow. Now you can experiment with you like and find what you see fits best. But I think that looks pretty nice. Maybe make it a bigger shadow since it's bigger. Oh, that looks good. Maybe make the size a bit smaller. And there we go. So things are starting to look pretty nice. It looks like a pretty legit profile picture. I'm just gonna press Control T and kind of tilt the Z a bit. Resize it a little so it just fits more. Better with the entire thing. And I think that's good. I'm going to center it one more time. Press Control A, layer, align, layer, selection, vertical centers, and then layer, align, layer, selection, horizontal centers. Since we resized it, we have to center it again. And then press Control D, and that is my profile picture. So one more thing we can actually do is add some additional effects if you want. You can go into Google Images again and search for, once again, you know, a flare, and then put PNG at the end. So as you can see, you have these flares you can add on. So for I can show you this one, for example. So I would go to view image, save image as, make sure it's a PNG, so flare PNG, and then just go to file, place, and then the file was called flare, so I'm going to put that in. Um, I'm going to put it on the top right over here. That looks all right. I'm also going to maybe add a color overlay this time and make it pink or purple to match the background and then just set the opacity down. That doesn't look that bad. And then here, change the overall opacity of the layer. So I'll make it like 30. So it kind of adds a flare effect to it. And that looks pretty good. I think that looks nice. So that's my profile picture. I'm interested to see what your guys is, is going to look like. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Of course, the final thing we have to do is just go to file, save as, and save it as a PNG or JPEG. But yeah, that's about it. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo, and I'm signing out.